Okay, folks. Uh, yeah, where we are? Uh, another episode of uh, how to program your own matrix analysis program. Now we're still working on trusses 2D. It's uh, yeah, it's probably the easiest one. We've gone through uh, the process of doing a EK where you know elements different matrix. After you program it, you pretty much just forget about it because you you all you need to know is just call it and then it'll give you EK. Okay, then we we actually called it in our GK to assemble a global stiffness matrix. GK. Um, then uh, we you know spoiler spo spoiler alert, the uh, GK is not invertible. Yeah, you. You can't really use it to solve any problem because the the determinant is zero. We, we explained in the class why it is so, because it doesn't really exclude the rigid body motion. Um, for a structural analysis program, a pr problem to be a real problem that's solvable, you need boundary conditions. You need loads, uh, and then we're going to show you how to uh, do that. Um, so basically, we we need to somehow. Uh, trick our GK program, uh, change it so that it's not your original GK that's unconstrained. That won't give you any answer, but a modified GK where you can actually use it to solve equations to find your displacements. So um, this program really is, uh, mm, you know, it's really the program that will apply your bound boundary conditions. So we start with function. Uh, we'll do our result as, e, as usual. We'll, we'll, it's really just uh, apply a uh, boundary condition. Um, uh, then you can say it's trust 2D. Yeah, it's a, it's a mouthful, but yeah, believe me, later on you're going to do apply BC uh, frame or trust 3D, 3D frame, or whatever. So yeah, it's good to make that distinction. So what this guy does should be taking our original GK we generated from this program we just programmed. And then we will apply boundary conditions. So we, we uh, I told you in the class, you know, you need to tell the program how to do it. So there's a BC matrix. And then we need to apply the loading because, uh, yeah, apparently, with just one matrix, you cannot solve for a vector. You need a matrix time your unknown vector. This time it's displacement vector equals to a force vector where you should know where that came from. That came from your external load. Um, so before we like even do this, let me kind of. Explain, just remind you what the, those BC and loads are. So here's the idea. Uh, let's see. Um, I told you your global stiffness matrix will be like this, and then those will be your global uh, displacement vector. Also, you can call it global degree freedom vector. Uh, I think that's more accurate. Um, but basically, inside there, uh, that's the movement uh, of each or, of your node. The first one could be x1, y1, x2, y2, da da da, depending on how many nodes you have. Okay. Uh, then it equals to a force vector that is the x direction force applied at node number one, x direction force applied at node number two. Um, I told you this fact in class, which it sounds a little bit obscure, but it's actually true, you know, it's almost counterintuitive. For all the analysis we're going to do in this class, in fact, for all the practical structural analysis program we'll ever do in finite element, on a degree of freedom, you either know the displacement or you know the force. Yeah, but until you solve the uh, problem, you don't know both. After you solve it, you know both. So as a pro problem that is solvable presented to you, you either know what's the force acting on this node, or you know uh, the displacement there. 
What, what do I mean by that? You have the known force for the most part, of course, you know, there's a nodal force of, you know, 10 pounds pressing down or things like that. But more of it is actually zero, you know. Like think about a truss problem. A lot of nodes on there, there's no external force. So no external force. Doesn't mean that there's no internal force, it's just there's no external force. So those, you know, marks here, like I say, no force, uh, most of the time it's going to be zero because there's nothing pressing on that node. Or if uh, you have an extra node on it, like a thousand pound, it'll be recorded accordingly. Then you're like, okay, well, that's good. But when do we do not know the force on a node? When your node is constrained, support, reaction force. I mean, you don't know the reaction force until you solve it. So if you don't know what the force is, you definitely know how much that thing is supposed to move. For example, for the most part, this here on the displacement side, if it is a constraint, then which you know it's not going to move, so you know the displacement is zero. Okay? And then there's other situations where maybe you have a, you know, support settlement, and those like very, very complicated problem if you want to solve it by hand. But in here it's easy. If you have, say, a support settlement at node number six, in the y direction. So if you just count down one, two, three, four, this would be the twelfths. You're like, what? What? Why twelfths? It's the sixth node. Okay, it's in the y direction. If you go x one, y one, x two, y two, when you get to x six, y six, this guy is at the twelfths position. So you, if it's fixed, then you just put zero in there. If it's not fixed. Um, you know the settlement, negative two, okay? Two inches down, put negative two in here. So our job is to actually uh, create this vector. Yeah, I'm gonna just like do. Our job is to actually create this vector based on loads. Then you're like, how could we do that? We don't know this guy. Well, just, you know, that's all we're gonna talk about, right? We're gonna put some like fake numbers in here. Uh, then we're gonna uh, modify our GK. Uh, we explain that pretty extensively during class. What we need to do is to basically, um, whenever we know the displacement, we're gonna keep the uh, diagonal term. Say if it's this is number twelve um, on the vector, the twelve like GK twelve twelve. We'll, we'll keep this k, whatever it is, original. Then we're gonna make all the other parts on this crosshair zero. Uh, they're like, oh, what? why are you doing this? Okay, first of all, you remember, if you remember the shovel rule, every single row in this uh, thing uh, is an equation. So the way we kind of make those guys zero and keep this guy is because we know this one. It's either zero or a number we know. Then we can actually make uh, this unknown. Yep, yeah, it's unknown. We don't know what it is. But if we just mathematically make it uh, k and then times the value we know, it can be zero. I don't care. This equation becomes, uh, you know, k shovel it, coming down here, times this thing we know equals to k times this thing we know. So basically we're forcing uh, the solution here to be the displacement we know. Then you're like, okay, well, how about the, those guys? Like, well, you put all those are zero now, like, now what? Uh, <clears throat> those are zero not because they don't exist, it is because we want to kind of, uh, you think about the equation, yeah, look at this equation, the first one. With this equation, when it comes here, this saying it's originally not zero. It's like a k, um, yes, k. Uh, in fact, it's one and twelve. Okay, k one twelve, k one twelve, uh, and then it's gonna be if you do the shovel rule, it's gonna be timed by this uh, value here. So we put this guy with zero, and then uh, what we do is that we kind of eliminated the contribution of this guy from this side of the equation. But 
to actually make the equation work, what we need to do is actually we need to move the whole thing into this side. So what we did here is to, for this value we know, uh, then we need to kind of minus k uh, 1, 12 uh, times that value we have. This way, we're still solving the same exact old equation. Uh, it'll be still be true, uh, but somehow we forced this to uh, we, we forced this solution to be this without affecting the solution of all the other things we really want to know. Okay, that's a very brief thing. You don't understand if you just look, look, look at this video, then just talk to your friends and get, their, get, get the notes from the class. This is really covered in lecture in great lens. Uh, if you still can do that, just you know, make an appointment with me, okay? So with that process explained, we need to talk about uh, how we uh, how we input and let the computer program know where the boundary conditions are. So here we use a BC boundary condition matrix. It's uh, um, how many ever boundary conditions you need uh, for a two D trust. At least you need three, but you know if it's overly constrained, you can you can be four, five, six, seven, yeah, whatever, a hundred. I don't care. Uh, it's always three columns. The first column is the node or number. As the node number, you, you name your node. Then the second number is the direction number. Uh, in here, we're only doing 2D. So really, we have one, two. OK, one is for direction x, two is for y. Then finally, once you know which node, which direction, then you just put the displacement value you know there. Uh, like I said, if it's constrained, for the most time, it's going to be zero. If there's like a you know a support settlement here, negative one. If it's support like a have up, it's plus one or plus two, whatever. Uh, then similarly for node matrix, uh, we will actually input uh, as a external load. Same same thing. I mean, you got the nodal number, which node? Node and node, yeah. I don't know how to pronounce them differently. You, you, you know the drill. Or force, okay. You know what's what node number this force, external force, is applied to. You know the direction of that force, and then you know the value of that force based on your coordinate system. Um, here's a uh, question coming naturally. It's like, oh, what's the unit? What's the unit? Okay, matrix structural analysis. The program doesn't care about unit. It is up to the user and you to make sure the inputted units, if you're going to do inch, pound, inch caps, whatever, it has to be consistent. Like your A, your E, um, everything needs to be consistent. Or you can do millimeter, Newton, megapascal, whatever. Okay. It always work. So keep that in mind while we program. Uh, oh, so here, here we're going to program. So first, um, what we're going to do is uh, um, to figure out uh, what's the uh, size of our GK. Because, I mean, it's a program. It's a computer. Stupid, right? He don't know what it is. You have to kind of uh, give him some hints, okay? So uh, we typically do like n by n, right? Uh, n by n uh, equals to size of GK, okay? So this will actually tell your program what's the size of your GK is. Uh, that's important. Once you get that, uh, you want to know how many boundary conditions you got. Okay? So let's say um, uh, the, the number of boundary conditions you got is the number of rows in your BC matrix. So just like B, um, the temp, yeah, we don't need this. We know it's going to be 3. So it's like, um, okay, so it's like the size of BC. Okay, so you got that. Uh, yeah, apparently you want to know how many nodes you have, so um, should I do that? Yeah, node, yeah, I don't like L. L is not very good. Temp um, equals to size of uh, node. So this pretty much stores the uh, dimension of your matrix in N, the number of, uh, of boundary condition B, and the number of nodes in F. 
so now we'll uh, generate a, uh, a, a, a an empty force vector uh, as our you know playground. So we got this uh, you know force uh, equals to um, ones. Uh, it's going to be a column vector, and it has n degree freedom, and then has one column. Uh, because it's empty, we're going to time zero, okay, to empty it. Um, yeah, because most of our uh, most of our force is going to be zero. Uh, now let's kind of put four things, okay, four, uh, i i equals to one through uh, f. Uh, then we're going to read, okay, so we're going to read the node. Uh, number equals to uh, load uh, the ii's row, uh, the first column. That's another number, right? We, I, I just told you. Then direction uh, equals to uh, node um, <coughs> ii, and then the second column. Right, okay. Uh, now, here's the funny part. Like, where if I tell you the node number and direction number, can you tell me at which location uh, this force value should be uh, should be placed in the vector force? Uh, yeah, what is yeah value equals to load uh, i i uh, three? Okay, so all I need to do is uh, to do this uh, uh, you know. Indexing uh, the index is where the location of that uh, for two D trust. It's very straightforward. There's a universal uh, formula where the index should be equals to the node number times two, uh, then minus the uh, direction number, and uh, then. Um, Oh, actually, not minus there. Plus the direction number, and then minus uh, one. Yeah, let, let's try it if it works. If I have no number one in the direction one, oh, uh, okay, yeah, I guess it's minus two. If I have no number one, that's two minus the x direction number one. Two plus one equals three. Three minus two equals to one. Okay, that's good. Um, if I have no number five, this will give me ten. Uh, ten plus uh, um, one or ten, ten plus two, uh, the minus two. Yeah, it, it, go ahead and check it. It's always right. So now we, all we need to do is just say force, and then index, and then one. Okay, equals to value. And then we finished putting in all the forces, right? Uh, now uh, we need to um, modify the uh, forces and uh, the GK. So let's uh, not touch the original one. We just like yeah get. Our uh, GK one and uh, force one. Uh, those are the kind of modified version. How to modify it? I just told you, and yeah, it's in the notes. So let's just first make a copy so that we don't like mess up anything. Um, yeah, and then force one equals to force. Uh, okay, so we made a copy, so we don't touch GK and force. We will just operate it uh, now. Uh, apply a boundary condition. Okay, how do you do that? Uh, yeah, apparently you have a for loop from ii equals to um, yeah. Now I can reuse ii because I closed it off here. So I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna go from one to you guessed it b. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna do something kind of a pretty uh, pretty fun here. Uh, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna kind of borrow from here. Uh, I'm gonna still try to find the load value and BC value here. Okay, hold on. Uh, the instead of doing this, I'm gonna do BC. Okay, 
um, because now I'm, I'm I'm getting the direction, location, and value of the my boundary condition, not the load. BC. Um, so the the, the easiest thing here is to um, first let's do the like a, a cross here uh, zeros. Um, so it's quite simple. Um, we need to find the index. Uh, and in here, index, it's the same. So, yeah, you, oh, I guess you can get an index here. Uh, so, what you can do is just simply do um, GK1, which it is GK at this point. Uh, and then you can do um, index, uh, and then uh, everything equals zero. Okay, that zero out the index uh, uh, row, and then you do the column by doing uh, this. Okay, but yeah, we do want to retain the uh, index index the, the cross here, right? So you, you just say GK one. Uh, what I say index index uh, should be equals to. Um, We we'll just grab the uh, GK index index. So yeah, this way basically zero out everything and then put the crosshair guy back. Um, yeah, in fact that's 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 all you need to do. That's all you need to do um, uh, with the um, with the uh, uh, GK. Yeah. But we're not done yet, right? I mean, you know that. So there are two two things going to get affected when you apply boundary condition. The first one is GK, which we already did. Pretty straightforward. Um, but the other one is this force thing. Remember, uh, I just showed you. Uh, yeah. Firstly, this guy needs to be changed to whatever this is. And this guy need to be retained and then keep minusing uh, through all the uh, things. Okay. So what do I do here? Uh, we will go through um, the loop again. Um, we will um, uh, do the minors first. So we'll just copy this. You're like, ah, why, why didn't you do that? Why don't you? Uh, I, I just make a mark here. This is like, um, uh, do the minus uh, thing on fourth side. Um, so we still got the index. Uh, then what need to happen is the um, force one uh, what gonna happen is that the the, the, the index uh, thing okay uh, mine uh, index one that element without changing everything it should be equals to and then remember this is the you know cumulative uh, cumulative uh, Minus, so keep minusing, minusing, minusing until it goes through all the boundary conditions. So uh, you need to minus the value of the boundary condition uh, times the original GK, uh, and then uh, remember that's the um, mm, uh, at the. Uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, it's uh, it's. Uh, oh, hold on. I think uh, it's everybody need to be good, but everybody. Um, 
Yeah, value times gk everybody at the index location. Um, yeah, because, uh, yeah, you're like, oh, why is that everybody? Uh, the reason is that, uh, oh, let me, let me just change to another color. Uh, this entire thing became zero, like every single row, okay? So this guy, it's not going to happen here. It's going to also happen here. Uh, but now it's different. It's like 212 times V. Then it times, okay, 312 times V. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you can think about it. In fact, it's basically taking the original K row here, uh, K column here, times V, and then minus this entire thing. So uh, yeah, so that's what this is about. Um, yep, then, because that's all the, this is the column ID. Um, but then you're going to say, oh, hold on a second. I, I think there's something funny here. Didn't you say like this guy will eventually be this one? But by doing this, you are like subtracting like a whole bunch. Like uh, what's this number now? Okay, so that, that's, a, that's the last step. Uh, we pretty much will have to do this again. Um, and then uh, here is like, uh, uh, um, let's see, give value back to uh, uh, force at uh, index. Uh, so what, what this does is that still do this whole thing, still find that, and but here is this. The, index guy yep uh, equals to uh, it's not a cumulative anymore you just say it's equals to gk index index uh, because of the sequence yeah uh, when you program like this has to be the last thing here it has to come after this because this uh, it's gonna mess this guy up but in the end it kind of get it everything so now after you've done all that you can output so basically now we, we also talk about how you're gonna do the um, do the structure you have a rest dot gk1 equals to gk1 and then rest dot uh, force 1 equals to force 1 and then you can solve the problem by uh, solving the equation, you know, represented by those two, this vector and this, this matrix and this vector. Okay, I think it'll run. Uh, at least give you some idea. And then uh, we'll store it. And then we'll see you in the next video.